Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 12th of August going through until Sunday the 18th of August 2024. Thanks for joining me, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to go through each day of the week to see what the planets are doing and how they'll influence you. Then I'll go through each sign of the zodiac, Aries through to Pisces to give you a specific message for your sun sign. And then at the end of the video I'm just going to make an announcement um, around some changes that are going to happen on the channel, changes to the content. So I'll go into that at the end. So I've had a look at this week and, you know, I don't think it's going to be the easiest week of the year. I think you may be a little prickly. There's a lot of room for disagreements and conflict and everything's kind of fired up. And that's kind of interesting because I'm filming this on the 11th of August. And tonight we've got a Perseid meteor shower happening, and that can be seen globally. It's best seen if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, but it's in the night of the 11th of August. So have a look at that if you're able to, you know, if you have clear skies, if you can have a look, and if you're a stargazer. And I always think the um, meteor showers are kind of like summer rains that bring in all of these wonderful new ideas and inspire us and bring in more heat and passion. So let's see what's happening first on Monday the 12th of August. We have the Moon in Scorpio, which really connects you to your innermost feelings. And it opposes Uranus and Taurus, which is the unexpected and chaotic. So if anything does happen that you weren't, that wasn't on your schedule, that you hadn't kind of expected to come your way, you could go into your feelings too much and re react emotionally rather than just dealing with the issue that's arisen. The Moon in Scorpio then also squares the Sun in Leo, trine Saturn in Pisces. And it quincuxes Mars and Jupiter in Gemini, as well as Chiron and Aries. And we've got Mars and Jupiter. Those two are like this at the moment. Mars is the personal planet of ambition and drive and what I want. And Jupiter is growth and expansion. It's good luck and it makes everything bigger, right? So with Mars being amplified by Jupiter all week, that's really where we can see this excess come in and disagreements and I am right and I'm not willing to consider another point of view. So on Monday, there may be a tendency to be overly reactive and to spend a lot of time kind of feeling your feelings rather than going into action. Um, especially if things don't go as planned. It's important to look at the issue at hand and not pass the blame on to someone else who may have nothing to do with the current problem or delay, but could serve as a convenient scapegoat. Because on Monday here, it's going to be more comfortable to kind of point the finger and blame someone else than to look at it on your own and to take accountability that, hey, maybe I got things wrong. So the key thing is to be willing to do that and to work through things solo if possible. On Tuesday the 13th of August, we have the moon still in Scorpio, so those intense feelings that could really take over a little bit. It still opposes Uranus and Taurus, but now it also trines Neptune in Pisces. Neptune is the water planet of dreams and what could be a manifestation and the intuition. So that softens it a little bit, but then we have the moon, which is your feeling, right? That goes into Sagittarius at one minute past 11 in the morning, and that's based on my time zone here in the UK. So the moon in Sagittarius is very different to Scorpio because Scorpio wants to get to the root cause, and I always see it as kind of diving down into the depths, into the dark places, right? And Sagittarius is very different in that it has this inner flame and this wonderful self-belief, and it says, I want to explore and I want to go on a mission. And I want to rely on my good luck because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. So that's an amazing shift on, on Tuesday because you are immediately more open-minded and willing to consider things that you meet uh, or that you run into on your journey. The moon in Sagittarius then squares Mercury in Virgo. And this is the real culprit, right? Because Mercury is the communication planet. It rules Virgo. So it's in a very powerful placement here. But it's in retrograde until the 28th of August. So when Mercury is in Virgo direct, it's very good at uh, making sense of information and creating meaning and coming to an accurate conclusion, right? But the problem with this now, and it's in Virgo until Thursday when it moves into Leo, until Thursday, it's, I think I'm right, but even if I um, have made some errors, there's now this short-sightedness that I may not see those, or even worse, I may not even be willing to consider that I've made a mistake. So that's a big thing this week, to be open-minded and to be willing to say, do you know what, I was wrong, I didn't get it. 
And finally, the Moon in Sag also then sextiles Pluto in Aquarius. So I'm galloping towards new ideas, right? I am more open-minded. So with that, you're, you're kind of galloping towards something else. And on an everyday level, things may not be as smooth as usual. So on Tuesday, I think there may be an unwillingness to kind of accept reality and a tendency to deny it, but then also to try and escape that reality. So anything that's going to allow you to take your mind off things or allow you to kind of hide out in a sense, you know, like a substance or a behavior that really just takes you out of your current reality and completely immerses you in a new one. I think using that in a positive way would be to do manifestation work, or like with magazine cutouts, you know, the images or lighting particular candles. Um, that's going to feel intense and satisfying and like you're creating something in spiritual truth and you're giving it life and putting it out there so that it then can become manifest. I also think on Tuesday, considering your own judgments on things, that's also a really good idea because you may have processed things incorrectly. And that's why it's such a good idea to say this week, hey, maybe I was wrong. Who knows? Wednesday, the 14th of August, we have the moon in Sagittarius. It now opposes Mars and Jupiter in Gemini. And these two, I really like the combo, but Mars in Gemini is very much about, I wanna get my point across, right? So it's kind of a chatterbox. And I think that as well, because the red planet is, is elevated via Jupiter, there's a tendency to be overly aggressive or to be too pushy here. So if you're traveling, that's a good thing because you won't take no for an answer. But then the moon in Sagittarius also squares Saturn in Pisces and Venus in Virgo. It also trines the sun in Leo and Chiron in Aries. So your role in things is very important. You may have a connection to the physical world, to your own imagination, to ideas that you find beautiful and soothing. So that is kind of like, you know, the place to escape to if you really need to in your own mind's eye and in a healthy way using your imagination, using your intuition, your, connecting, your connection to source. But then we also have Mercury in Virgo, Quincux in Pluto and Aquarius. So there may be a lot of new information coming at you on Wednesday, but you may get the wrong end of the stick. So just read everything carefully and make sure that you don't overlook anything. And then finally, Mars in Gemini conjunct Jupiter in Gemini. So this friendship here between these two is at its peak here on Wednesday. When they conjunct, they sit together at the same degree. So really, if you don't want to share some sort of secret publicly, then make sure that you decide that before you go into the public setting, because you may be, you may have loose lips on Wednesday. Okay. So I've put down here, Wednesday the 14th is kind of the day of the egomaniac who thinks they're superior. It's everything is elevated to the extreme, right? So the way to bring that back down to normal, it's important to be willing to listen to what other people are saying and what their point of view is, and also to let go of control. So the way you or someone else in your life, the way they come across or the way you come across on Wednesday, that could easily be, be misread. So what I've put down as an example, you know, often people who have social anxiety, they're often received by the group as being arrogant or aloof. So it's that kind of tendency to misread something and then to come to a faulty conclusion about it. So avoid any judgment on Wednesday if you can. On the flip side of that, if you really need to do something that usually scares you half to death, you'll have the confidence to do that on Wednesday. So use it to your advantage. Thursday, the 15th of August, we have now Mercury, the communication planet, retrograding back into Leo at 16 minutes past one in the morning. So now it, it's not as I am right and that's just the way it is. <laughs> now it's I'm expressing things and I'm confident even in areas where I may not be so skilled. So, you know, if it comes to the crunch like that, if you have all these big opinions, but they can actually be um, fact checked, then make sure that you're double checking your own idea, ideas that you're expressing and you're not just assuming that you're right. You know, so the moon in Sagittarius, then on Thursday, it trines the sun in Leo, it Chiron in Aries, Mercury in Leo, and it squares Neptune in Pisces, and then Queen Cux is Uranus in Taurus. So that's very much of a whirlwind. We've got your imagination, your dreams, you've got confidence, you've got 
um, things being changeable. Mercury and Leo also quincuxes Neptune and Pisces. That's good for creativity, spiritual connection, and the imagination. The sun in Leo then trines Chiron and Aries, which means that if I have fun, if I take care of my inner child, I can heal something in myself. The moon then enters Capricorn at 6.51 in the evening, again UK time, and the moon in Capricorn is very grounded and very willing to do the work, both practical, physical work, menial tasks, and it's able to do the inner emotional work. And finally, Mars in Gemini squares Saturn in Pisces. So now we've got the kind of wisdom of Saturn coming in here, the sense of I'm supported. And because of that, I think things calm down a little bit and you don't feel so um, almost anxious to get something across or to stand your ground or to prove that you're not right. There's almost a sense for the first few days here that you're being encroached upon and you don't want anyone to kind of find out your secret as such. It's kind of a, a suspicious type of energy. Um, so on Thursday, you become more interested in the things that are practical and simple. So things like travel, exercise, spending time in nature, all of that will feel like a relief after all the conflict of the last few days. The problem though on Thursday is that you are still likely to feel like you're right and that that is very important. And that will continue to keep you on the war path. And the war path isn't going to seem very unattractive to you. I think you may want to engage in some conflict. It's almost like it's time that we have this out, you know. So be vigilant around resentments that you pick up here on Thursday, but also the whole week, because they may be completely unfounded in truth and maybe about something where you've just heard one snippet and you got the wrong idea. It's that kind of treacherous, tricky week. Friday the 16th of August, we have Mars and Gemini now forming a square with Saturn in Pisces. So that's a great kind of communication between I'm going to take spiritually guided action. I'm not just going to do this by myself and I'm willing to accept help. I'm not just in this place where I think I'm right all the time. The moon in Capricorn then trines Venus in Virgo, which is a lovely connection to the Earth. So creativity, you know, pottery, um, flower arranging, walking in the woods. That's wonderful. It sextiles Saturn in Pisces, so your imagination and a sense of I'm loved and supported. And then it quincuxes Mars and Jupiter in Gemini still. So I think with this, if you work creatively as a writer, as an artist, as a performer, I think Friday is a great day for that. It's amazing for creative expression. But again, on the flip side, it's a bad day for being lectured. So if you think that um, someone is always kind of having a go at you and putting you down or telling you they know better than you do, you're going to have zero tolerance for it. And um, you may have a tendency to roll your eyes on Friday. That is, I mean, you've got a choice, right? If you're like, I've heard this before, which is, I really think the way you feel, then you can either avoid it or challenge it. And I don't think challenging it is going to be um, the best way forward. So finding a way to maybe consider it in a different way or to spend less time with that person, I think are the best ways forward. But obviously you judge that on your own merit system, you know? Um, the things that are good on Friday is taking care of your own body and your own practical necessities. That's going to be something where you can get things done easily and it's also a nice distraction. And ultimately going into the whole week here with the mantra, I'm willing to learn, I'm not always right, that's really going to pay off for you. So now moving into the weekend, we have uh, two days which are much more harmonious. Saturday the 17th of August, the moon is in Capricorn and it squares Chiron and Aries. So how can I do the heavy lifting to make my own life better? So I'm taking responsibility for myself, right? It trines Uranus and Taurus. Change is something that's going to happen and I just need to accept it. It's much more cut and dry. It's not as emotional now at the end of the week. It quincuxes the sun and Mercury and Leo. So I want to have fun, I want to explore new things, I want to get in touch with the inner child. And it's textiles, Neptune and Pisces, so what's the dream? What amazing thing could be? So your mood really shifts towards the amazing things that are still to come. The moon enters Aquarius at 10.45 in the evening. So now really what feels like home is communication and new ideas. So it's interesting that the day before you didn't want to be lectured, on Saturday you're willing to hear even very long-winded stories and find them very interesting. And the Aquarius moon then conjunct Pluto in Aquarius. So it's really all about new ideas. So if you're an inventor or a scientist, or you're looking for that fabulous business idea that's going to set you up for life, 
look at that on Saturday. But finally, here on the weekend, some simple joys and the simple pleasures in life. Spending time with other people, particularly if you're doing something earthy as a group, like baking bread or planting flower seeds or, I mean, I don't know how many people do this, but making a quilt together or something like that. Anything like that will bring you back to, you know, humanity. It'll make you feel like you've got some connection again. And you can really have a, 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 an experience of shared joy on Saturday without any of the conflict now. And then finally, on Sunday, the 18th of August, we've got Mercury and Leo forming a square with Uranus and Taurus. So again, watch out for jumping to a faulty conclusion. Give yourself time to look at things properly. <laughs> the Sun in Leo then conjuncts Mercury in Leo. Great confidence, the inner child, I want to play, I want to do things which are frivolous and which give me energy and which are lovely. The Moon in Aquarius then trines Mars and Jupiter in Gemini. So again, that whole, if you have, a, if you find it difficult to not express every thought that you have, particularly about another person, then Sunday isn't good because really if it's on your tongue, it's out there. Or if it's in your mind, it will be on your tongue like immediately, right? So again, it's good instead for writers and creative people. The um, Moon in Aquarius then also quincuxes Venus in Virgo and then Venus in Virgo trines Mars in Gemini. So I think it's good for for um, romantic relationships. I think it's good for dates. I think it's getting to know someone, being willing to explore and to see their experience. So if you're single and looking for love, I think Sunday is the best day for it. But it's also a great day for travel and for exercise. Creativity and public speaking are also supported. You put your best foot forward. Still, I would say though that debates and really serious discussions aren't ideal as there's too much at stake. You know, the idea of being found out to be wrong, that's really the theme of the week. Like, I don't want to lose face here. So I think with that, uh, looking into that, that the solution to any conflict this week is, admit, is admitting when you are wrong, instead of digging your, your heels in and just saying out of principle that, no, this is the way it's got to be because I said so a week ago. That's really the path to genuine serious conflict. Okay, so let's have a look at each sign of the zodiac then, Aries. You may be a little aggressive this week, and you may be particularly aggressive when it comes to getting your point across. So that is not a good thing in a work setting, so watch out for that. But it could help you in your personal relationships. If you need to share something with a partner, if you're reluctant to share this thing, if it's a secret or some sort of truth and you don't know how it's going to go down, you'll have the confidence to be honest and to get that off your chest. So this is via Mercury retrograde for you being the opportunity to do things differently and to say things that would usually remain unsaid and that may create distance between you and your partner. Taurus, your purse strings may feel very loose this week. So be careful around excessive spending, excessive shopping, or escaping, so to speak, through an excess of anything, whether it's overeating or substances. I think this week, by choosing moderation over excess, that's going to be better for your bank account and for your physical health. And then I've put in brackets here, um, hypocr hypocrisy, <laughs> because... Um, Moderation is not something that I'm particularly an expert in. I've never been very good at that. But if you have this, you know, this, this craving or this compulsion to do something because it will make you feel better or it promises to make you feel better, then just stay away from that as much as you can and kind of try and work through things on your own without outside influences. Gemini, you're going to be able to produce wonderful work using your abilities to communicate this week. So whether it's writing, speaking presentations, or through art, you'll be able to create something exceptional that will be very different either in style or content to what you've done in the past. So if you're a creative Gemini, this is really your week to unearth the new kind of way of doing things. Cancer, you may have people living on your grid this week and not in a good way. So you may be worried about your relationships or relationship in particular, or you may be um, anxious about what's going to happen in future. And also you may want to escape that, particularly by um, 
changing your feelings through substances, alcohol, drugs, that kind of thing, right? But what's really um, going to ease the stress for you in earnest is giving the benefit to the doubt of the other person. And by remembering that you don't always say what you mean or you don't always get your point across exactly as you meant it. So any disagreements aren't as significant as they may seem. It's just because things are heightened this week. So really give things time to cool off a little bit rather than making big decisions based on a an argument that has just been had, you know? Leo, for you this week is a fabulous opportunity to go over anything like contracts or any written work that you've done. Double and triple check everything. And by doing that, you may highlight some info that's outdated and needs to be updated. And that also applies to your finances. So for example, you know, the interest rate you have on a savings account, you thought you were getting a certain percentage, that's now changed and you haven't kept up to date with it. So kind of looking at those type of details, both in communication, written work, and in terms of your finances, you can really um, perfect things and get them going the way you want. Virgo, you may feel unusually carefree and joyful this week, like you don't have a care in the world. You feel spiritually supported and you feel lit up by all these new ideas that occur to you often this week and the things that could happen in your life. So you're really um, influenced by the, the Persid meteor shower in the sense that look at all the possibilities that could happen and look how wonderful they all look and how different everything is and how magical life can be. So consider your own new ideas really seriously and write them down for future use when you feel less inspired and less like you're, you know, you've got the joy of life just spilling out of you endlessly. So it's, it's great because for you, it's kind of like a break from the usual sense of I need to learn and understand to feel safe in life and to make meaning and all these things. Libra, for you, the argumentative side of things is highlighted. So you may have... Um, a, a serious argument with someone that makes you really just want to pack your bags and go and be done with it once and for all. So that kind of thing is great if you're stuck in a situation that you've tolerated for too long and that requires some anger to actually shift it and end it. But obviously it's not so ideal if you want to keep everything as is, particularly in your personal relationships, right? So the gift of the week for you is that you can reclaim your purpose and your joy despite any conflict that you may have. Or in fact, I think that you're able to rediscover your own purpose and joy because of the conflict. Because it makes you realize that you want something different and that fundamentally this is not compatible. And therefore, this is a desire, a purpose that I feel in my bones and I'm not going to compromise it for anything or anybody. So you can really nail it this week, Libra. Scorpio, you may have an unexpected opportunity to appear in public. So a TV appearance or a speech or something. If you get this kind of offer, then please go for it. The different and new experience will motivate you to consider other options in your life, both personally and at work. So let yourself be swept up by something, Scorpio, that's totally unexpected and you're likely to have a very positive experience that's surprising to you and everyone else around you. Sagittarius, you may be a little over all the drama that's going on in the week and you may decide to take a break from all of it, right? And in your case, it would be by traveling alone. So if you have that opportunity this week, please take it. You'll enjoy the peace and quiet. And out of the, all of the signs, you're really the most prone to roll your eyes. And it's like, really, do I have to listen to this again? I've had it. <laughs> so if you have the opportunity to get away for a bit, you'll really like that. And then you can um, work creatively, but also figure out your purpose. But it's better done if you're not com you're not being bombarded all the time by other people's ideas and thoughts and needs. Capricorn, be careful this week um, in work, especially if you're working in some sort of team setup, that you're not overly critical of other people or overly demanding. So it's possible that you do have some conflict in work this week. The solution to that is being open and willing to adapt your work and others 
and to implement the, the ideas of other people. And ultimately, it's actually a good thing if it's not just you doing everything this week, because you may overlook something and, you know, 10 sets of eyes are better than just your two. So it's important not to resist that kind of um, pressure to work collaboratively and instead to, again, go with the flow and not to dig your heels in as much. Aquarius, if you're in a romantic relationship, you may come up with an incredibly intimate and romantic idea. So I don't know, like the idea for the perfect date or something. So if you get that, try and make it happen this week. It will be unexpected and warmly received by your partner. And out of all of the signs, Aquarius, you're the least likely to have conflict this week. You're remarkably tapped into other people's moods and feelings. And you can even have a confident, uh, a positive influence on other people in that area. Um, but the reason for that is you're less affected by all of this conflict and you're able to kind of skate above it a little bit. So you're really um, the ideal of how we could be this week. And you may have a lot of people then come to you with problems or asking you for help because you do seem so together this week. Pisces, you may have um, the experience, you may find that you have some trouble getting things to work as they should this week. So give yourself extra time to get things done, whether that's appliances or travel or emails or anything like that. Just be patient with yourself and, and schedule in more time if possible. If you can spend time this week with friends and family, please do so. You're less affected by any conflict this week. Similarly to um, Aquarius, and you can really have a positive experience and also be the voice of reason and the person who kind of soothes things, right? So that's what I got for you guys this week. I hope it gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. I hope you have a fabulous week. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, scroll down a bit until you get to the button that says book your reading. Click on that to order your reading with me. And to draw up your natal chart, your birth chart, right, I need three things. I need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, then please order a chart rectification on my website. That's a process where you send me 10 or more significant life events, and I manually work out your time of birth, which is really useful to have because the chart changes every four minutes. So the closer the time, the better the chart is. If you have any questions about what's coming up in future, if you're in a transition period and you want to see what's best, best and when, where you're supported in finances or in moving or changing your job or relationships or anything um, at all coming up. Also, if you want an analysis of your natal chart, which is, I think, the best personality profile we have, it really is a blueprint of who you are. And if you're looking to understand yourself better, then please also get in touch with me for a personal reading. And then finally, I look at the transits to see what's coming up in future, but I also use the astro cartography to see what places, what actual locations on planet Earth would work nicely for you. So if you want me to do any of that for you, look at your natal chart or um, see what the tarot has to say about your situation to answer your questions. Or if you want to look at the, your own numbers based on your name and your date of birth, anything at all, please do get in touch with me for a personal reading via gregoryscott.com. And um, yes, I wanted to mention that I'm going to change the content of um, the way that I do the horoscopes, right? So I'm not going to do the weekly horoscope anymore. I've decided, which is a big decision for me because I've been doing these weekly horoscopes for years and I love them. But I want to do horoscopes further ahead, right? So I want to concentrate on the monthly horoscopes for each sign of the zodiac. I want to also do either quarterly or the year in thirds. So do horoscopes for three or four months, looking ahead again for each sign of the zodiac. And then I also want to do the yearlies. So not doing the, the weekly on the Sunday will free me up a lot to, to look into those more long-term horoscope. So I'm going to try that out and do things that way for a little bit. I may, may, may go back to doing the weekly horoscopes. I'm not sure yet, but I just feel guided to make some changes to the structure of the channel and the way I present the horoscopes. So I just wanted to let you guys know that's what I'm going to be doing as of probably next Sunday. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, so I hope that gives you an idea of what is coming up for you this week. 
Monday the 12th until Sunday the 18th of August. Have a fabulous time and I will speak to you soon. All the best. Take care.